Hey guys, welcome to the next part of my C-Sharp series with the Rollerball-esque sort of gameplay and we're adding more and more things to it. So in the last video we looked at power-ups and we looked at affecting some variables which were public and being able to change those to what exactly what we might want. Now we wanted to be able to create a simple timer so that when we go into the actual collision event that when that timer expires we'll use up the power up or we won't be able to use it anymore so we might have a speed boost for only a certain amount of time. So there's a few ways that you can do this but one way is to use a coroutine. I'll leave a link in the description because I've got a video specifically on that but I will go into it in this series. So uh, to the start with that normally you have you declare your method with void and that just means it doesn't usually return a value. But in this case, we want to we can remove to the private void and we can change this to I enumerator. And that just means that we're going to be able to do some commands within Unity to do a coroutine. So a coroutine usually it takes away commands from this. So normally we, we run serially in this in these statements. So one after another. But what a coroutine allows us to do is take the functionality away, do something else, and then give the commands back to the script to then say, let's do something again. So it just allows you to do little pauses, breaks. It depends. It can get more complicated than this, but this is one way that you can implement the sort of functionality. So now we've got enumerator on trigger enter. We can now use a simple yield command to be able to wait a specific amount of time and then give commands back to the actual method itself. So what we can do is under here, we're going to change the normal, the actual speed to the boosted speed. Now we want to wait a certain amount of time. So what we can do in this case is we can write yield because that's the command we write for being able to wait the time. We'll say return new and then we'll write wait for seconds. And then we want to actually have brackets and usually in quotes you can specify a number as so and then add a semicolon to change that statement so it would wait realistically 3833 seconds which is far too long but to change that we could create another square bracket serialized field private integer and we could just call this delay and the delay is going to replace what we had in the quotes so that's there we can add this delay into our boosted jump and of course you can affect change this delay it seen as though this collision script can be on any different number of objects so the delay could be different for the speed that you'd have or the jumps that you'd have so say jump was supposed to last 10 seconds you can do that or if speed was only supposed to last five you can do that in this case when the delay is ended we want to make our speed go back to the normal speed so we can say my player controller dot speed e equals my player controller dot norm speed like we'd set in the original script and very similar we could do for the jump we could say we could say my player controller dot jump force equals the my player controller dot norm jump force with a semicolon so we're just setting it back to in this script we're setting these two values back to their normal because we've done what we wanted to do and then what we could do in this case is just say that this dot game object dot set active in brackets we could just say false with a semicolon and this means it's just going to turn this um, trigger event off maybe we want to only access this power up once so it can make it disappear after we've done it and we'll do the same here dot set active in brackets false with a semicolon so literally all we're doing is like we did before but now we've used an enumerator and we can wait an amount of seconds that we're going to delay then we'll set the speed back to the normal speed that we specified in our other script and then just turn the game object off so what we can do is we can go back into unity again look at our speed trigger and you can see that when we go to speed we've got a delay so we could say five seconds we've got the jump trigger which could be let's say five seconds as well just for the sake of this and of course we can add lots of different elements to our game and our gameplay that we could when we enter this trigger we could add a UI to make it apparent that we've got now speed boost so we could have a lightning bolt or something or something that maybe appears over or near our player 
and it could light up and it could have a little visual counter that counts down over a sort of world space UI, anything like this, just to make it coherent to what and obvious to the player that we've now got this power up or even let's say that the ball changes colour. But there's so many little things that you can do and it's all about editing the components that are already on or that exist in your game. So we'll give this a test. You can see that now we've got the super speed and we're going through it at a crazy amount of time. And then you can see after the allotted time, we've actually gone back to our normal speed. And similarly with our jumping, we've got the increased jump amount that we've got here. And now after our allotted time, it ends and as many times as we want to go back into the actual triggers themselves because they ended, you could obviously turn off the parent game object or something like that. It allows us to affect parts of the game and then set it back to its original value without us really doing a lot of work and it just takes us to add a little bit of groundwork to make sure that we have you know, the normal variables that we can set back to and it allows us just to add simple lines of code just to add more and more complexity to our game so you're adding more and more layers as you go along. So hopefully this was another one that helped you understand the addition of coroutines and just creating more functionality to things that you might want to create. So thanks very much for watching, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, cheers!